John, a lot of famous, well-known, successful investors like Buffett, uh, Bill Gates, and others, they say they spend a good portion of their day reading and thinking strategically. So what proportion of your day do you spend reading and, and thinking? Well, I would say that at least about eight hours a day, uh, if not more, uh, and, you, and you go in spurts. You, you know, you can't do eight hours continuous, but I can certainly sit there for two or three hours and put things, put things down and then go back and think about them. I think the important thing is, is that, you know, it's reading but also thinking strategically and trying to really understand what people are saying. Now, obviously, you want to be productive, you want to be efficient, you want to filter out stuff that's not relevant to you or to, to, your, to your thinking. How do you do that? How do you approach that? It's challenging, quite frankly, because, you know, given today's internet age, uh, you know, people can go to all kinds of different channels, like our platform at Uncommon Sense Investor. You know, every morning your inbox is filled with uh, all kinds of stuff and so you really have to be, become quite discriminating and and uh, you know go through a routine of saying please take me off your distribution list or there's certain things where I'm focusing on where I want to really learn about one thing or another let's say for example you know when the virus was first starting we spent a lot of time on the CDC website uh, trying to understand the, the nature of viruses and how they evolve so you start really trying to get you know drill down into one subject you might spend you know, a whole week or, or, or months uh, working and trying to get more and more informed about one particular subject. The virus is actually a, a good example because you were uh, fairly early compared to the rest of the market in realizing what was happening in China was a problem. And you realized that through some of the reading that you do. Was that strategy or where did you start seeing that? We picked it up in a couple of different channels. And one of the great things, once again, about the internet age is there's so much information out there now. Uh, and so many people that are saying intelligent things in so many different formats and forms. We picked it up in Stratechery, uh, Ben Thompson, uh, and we also picked it up on, um, on, on Twitter. Uh, because, and that's, you know, one of the, one of the things with this whole discussion about freedom of speech and, and hate crime uh, on, on social media. But social media is also a great place to actually have a lot of things exposed to you. And so it, it can be a very, very valuable platform uh, for learning about information, that's for sure. You need to drill down a little bit. There's often talk about confirmation bias, whereby people gravitate to uh, sources that confirm their biases. How do you uh, avoid that, and how do you make sure that you're, you're not listening to somebody or reading someone or uh, an entity that does have a bias? I think it's one of the biggest challenge, challenges that all investors really struggle with is confirmation bias really wanting to have people agree with your point of view. It, it's very difficult to train your mind to find people that are saying things that disagree with your point of view. Uh, and Because by doing so, you're constantly challenging your own assumptions and really making, forcing yourself to think, what if I'm wrong? I mean, everything about investing is mitigating as many risks as possible. And one of those risks is, is that you're reading people that agree with you all the time. Um, and that can be a very, very unhealthy uh, point of view. And would you agree that you want to have a b balance as well? I'm thinking of, say, uh, Ed Yardini on the one side. Great research. He's usually fairly bullish, often quite right. On the other side, for example, would be a David Rosenberg, very high profile, uh, hugely prolific. He doesn't really agree with it, but he's seen to be a little more bearish, although he is bullish on, say, Japanese stocks and gold and other uh, areas. So you read one, you read the other, and then you make up your mind, right? You have to really know where you're getting your information from. Brokerage firms tend to be uh, conflicted. Uh, some people tend to have optimistic uh, uh, biases. Some people tend to market themselves as pessimists and, 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 and paint the doom and gloom uh, forecasts. So I think you need to know the source and consider that source's uh, biases when you're doing your own research. What do you know that you can dismiss immediately when you start looking at something, watching it, reading it, you just dismiss it right away, and, and why? I, I think price targets uh, are usually uh, pretty meaningless. Um, once again, you've got analysts that call stocks outperform and they have negative returns, uh, expected returns. Um, so I, th I think there's a lot of different things you can, you can, you can dispose of, but it's usually price targets, stock ranking, uh, because brokers tend to, you know, have things called outperform all the time, um, and a lot of economic forecasts. 
because um, you know most economists are known for on one hand and then on the other hand without any real concrete um, projections. All right, so you read about eight hours a day. What's your ultimate goal in managing money for clients and what should investors' ultimate goal be when they are doing their research? I think, once again, you want to make sure that you're really basing your decisions on concrete, fundamental decisions. Uh, the longer your time horizons, the lower the risks are th to your assumptions. Uh, and so look for factual information, uh, source it and check it from multiple different sources, as many independent uh, sources as you possibly can. The internet is an amazing place. Don't always just look at investment research to have your, your, your theses confirmed. Uh, and um, uh, do your own reading and, and read uh, corporate uh, transcripts of their conference calls. You'll see which managers tend to uh, project optimistic um, scenarios and those that are saying, look, these are the real struggles of our business. Uh, but these are the things we're going to try to do about them. The people that come across as very common sense, down to earth uh, business people who are trying to communicate what really is a very diff difficult uh, process of forecasting the future. Or even better, they have uncommon sense. They have uncommon sense. See what we did there? <laughs> <laughs> that was good.